The energy and atmosphere credit category approaches energy from a holistic perspective, addressing energy use reduction, energy efficient design strategies, renewable energy sources, refrigerant management, and peak load management. My name is Emma Hughes, and I work at the U.S. Green Building Council on technical development of LEED, focusing on energy and atmosphere. We are excited to share the evolution of our design and construction rating systems under LEED version 4.1. LEED's system goals explain what LEED aims to achieve. The strategies within the energy and atmosphere credit category impact many of these goals, and they play a primary role in LEED's first system goal, which is reducing building contributions to global climate change. Because of this, the energy and atmosphere credit category offers the most points in the LEED rating system. The scientific consensus is clear. Earth's climate is warming. Climate change is already affecting us all through sea level rise and an increase in extreme weather events. This, in turn, is changing the way we make choices about the built environment. Reducing carbon emissions is critical to preserving our world, and at USGBC, we work to mitigate the effects of climate change through green building. Buildings represent 41% of total U.S. energy output, which means we have a big opportunity to improve our structures and decrease their energy use. That's why LEED version 4.1 continues to raise the bar on improving building performance. It's been five years since the launch of LEED version 4, and the market is evolving rapidly. The updates we've made in the energy and atmosphere credit category are critical to address climate change. Here is the full list of prerequisites and credits in the energy and atmosphere credit category in LEED version 4.1 for design and construction. Let's walk through some of the highlights in LEED version 4.1. When LEED v4 was released in 2013, it referenced ASHRAE 90.1 2010. In order to remain a leadership standard to drive market transformation, LEED version 4.1 updates reference standards and metrics where needed. That's why LEED version 4.1 references ASHRAE 90.1 2016. The more we learn about climate change, the more essential it is to continue to raise the bar. To more directly impact climate change, in version 4.1, projects earn points for energy performance using the metrics of cost and greenhouse gas emissions. Both of these metrics provide valuable insight into building energy consumption and the environmental impacts of energy use. Cost is obviously a direct concern to building owners, but on top of that, the cost metric helps teams understand not just how much energy a project is using, but when that energy is being used. High energy costs can result from energy use demand increasing during specific times of the day. Reviewing energy cost data can help motivate projects to not only reduce their total energy usage, but to consider the time of their energy usage. The other half of the performance metric is greenhouse gas emissions. We want LEED projects to directly address their emissions and implement strategies to minimize greenhouse gas emissions from building energy use. Elsewhere, in the energy and atmosphere credit category, we've also updated the reference standards for commissioning and building envelope commissioning. The renewable energy market is evolving rapidly. We know that energy efficiency is only going to get building projects so far. The highest performing net zero energy buildings are using on-site and off-site renewable energy, and we wanted to recognize that in this version of LEED. In the Optimize Energy Performance Credit, on-site renewables can count towards both the cost and greenhouse gas emissions metrics. New off-site renewables count towards the greenhouse gas emissions metric only. LEED version 4.1 also features a new renewable energy credit, which combines the renewable energy production and green power and carbon offsets credits from LEED version 4. This recognizes the way that the renewables market is rapidly evolving and the new procurement strategies that are available to projects. Projects can sum their renewables procurement across the multiple categories to earn up to five points under this credit. Finally, 
Lead version 4.1 features updates to the demand response credit, which is now called grid harmonization. This credit directly addresses the role of buildings in supporting grid scale decarbonization. We're excited to offer a new third option in this credit that rewards technologies and strategies for building load flexibility and management. We know that not all projects have access to demand response programs, so we wanted to reward projects for taking advantage of other strategies that have the same intent of reducing strain on the grid. The energy and atmosphere category in LEED version 4.1 raises the bar and more closely connects LEED projects with the essential goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions.